Hello, dear test takers. Welcome back to my Grammar for Success channel. I am Koresh Babu, a retired lecturer in English from Hyderabad. In today's video, I am going to explain the grammar questions given in the 2016 TET paper 2. Okay, and this is going to be my last video on TET grammar questions. All of you know that the previous year's question papers are very, very important and very, very valuable because they help you get acquainted with the question paper pattern, kinds of questions and the framing of questions. You also know that they help you gain more confidence over the subject. Therefore, I request all of you to watch this information packed and fully explained video till the end without skipping it in the middle. I also request you to watch all those videos that were made on uh, TED paper 1 okay so that you can gain more and more confidence and more and more familiarity with the question paper pattern thank you so much and now let's get into the video 61st to 65 you know very well in your question paper the grammar questions will begin from 61st question onwards and at the very beginning of the grammar part of the question paper there has been given a beautiful passage and you have to read this passage carefully you have to understand it thoroughly and you have to answer the questions below that very correctly okay so this is the job you have to do and uh, on your behalf i will read this passage and explain it to you please listen to it uh, very attentively right and what is that passage so here is this beautiful passage and uh, uh, what is said in this passage okay let us learn it if you look around and observe common people you will recognize that they have they too have a big dream okay if you look at the common people what happens now you find that uh, they too have a big dream what is the dream? A dream of becoming successful in life. A dream of becoming prosperous in life. A dream of reaching the greatest heights in life. So that kind of dream is even with the common people. That is the meaning of that. And then what is happening? They ignore it. They deny it. They even bury it. But unfortunately what happens No, they don't care for that dream. They despise that dream. They overpass that dream. And they, even they forget that dream. Why? Why it is so? Means here another question, a sentence is there. It also happens due to lack of knowledge and ignorance about the power of learning. So these common people do not know the power of learning, the power of education, the power of knowledge. So they, they that is the reason why they ignore and deny and for, bury their you can say dream. Okay. And if you look around and observe excellent people so here he talked to you about common people and excellent people excellent people means able people accomplished people uh, what you call you know uh, what is that capable people or something like that you know excellent people you recognize that they have a dream so these excellent people will also have a big dream what is that big dream? A dream of reaching great heights in life. A dream of becoming prosperous and successful in life. That is a dream. It is That dream is with everybody. You too will have that kind of dream. You want to become something great in life. Okay. Don't you want, don't you have that dream? Okay. Everybody has the dream. So here the excellent people will have the dream, but they never ignore it. This is an important part. They never despise that. They never over, overlook that uh, uh, dream and they uh, and nor do they deny it and do, they also don't forget about it. They, are, they don't, uh, uh, they don't, they can say, put it aside. That is there. If they had done mistakes in the past, they free themselves from self-contempt. That is what the meaning of this is, you know. If at all, these excellent people make mistakes in their life, you know, they immediately rectify. That is very important. People make mistakes. To err is human is there. Okay, you make mistakes, I make mistakes. But uh, rectifying those mistakes is an important aspect of life. But some people don't like to rectify their mistakes. They want to continue to live with their th those mistakes, and that is the problem with some of the people. But here, excellent people are there. They immediately rectify those mistakes uh, that they made in the past. They made in the past, right? And here, they live their dream by extracting more and more knowledge uh, from from the nature, surroundings, the environment, past experience and almost important of all their failure so here what happens you know they try to these excellent people try to realize their dream 
okay they want to live their dream is they want to realize their dream they want to make fruitful their dream what do they do they by extracting more and more knowledge that means they obtain or they what is that they learn more and more knowledge from what from nature okay from nature means this sh uh, article should not be used but in this paragraph it is used you know, don't think that all the writers will stick to the grammatical rules okay here uh, actually we should not use this the before that because nature means out, outer world okay prakriti okay nature has also another meaning swabhava move then you can use but uh, when it means uh, outer world you should not use okay here it is used leave it okay and uh, from nature uh, they learn some lessons uh, surroundings uh, okay some environment past experience and most important from their failures also excellent people will learn lessons from nature surroundings environment past experience and failure so that's a great thing that's why they will prosper tremendously in their life okay you too should uh, take lessons from your past experience from your failures from your uh, surroundings and all that okay you will also become prosperous in life right they act in a more mature way by accepting that nobody is perfect okay they know pretty well that uh, they uh, that uh, there is nobody in this entire world uh, a man who is perfect there is no man who is perfect that means every man is you know has has made mistakes i have made mistakes you have made mistakes and still we are making mistakes you know that is the human nature okay right so here that they know this fact that nobody is perfect and that's why now they don't think about uh, think uh, regret their mistakes okay and there is always a room for doing things in a better way and that's why they can correct it they can correct their mistakes and they can move forward that is the thing they know pretty well who oh, these excellent people know pretty well about that okay and now let's go to the uh, next uh, uh, slide for the remaining uh, passage this is the remaining part of the passage okay uh, excellent people still he is going on telling you about the excellent people and uh, are those who face tremendous setbacks tremendous means wonderful okay terrible I ha we had better because you know uh, we cannot uh, setbacks means defeats defeats cannot be wonderful so that's why you have we had better take this exit this meaning from this tremendous means terrible defeats these excellent people okay in the course of life in the course of their life faced terrible defeats in spite of that what happened they don't succeed you know they thought they don't succeed but uh, you know because they have an abundance of okay they have uh, uh, an absence of problems because they have an abundance of strategies to implement and rise above setbacks but they were not scared of those defeats the meaning of this is they faced terrible defeats but they have not scared of the defeats because they have abundance of strategies strategies means plans to implement and rise above those setbacks to defeat those setbacks to remove those uh, obstacles or setbacks okay that's why uh, they know the trick you know they know they have some plans how to tide over these defeats how to tide over these obstacles and all that right and now go to the last paragraph not surprisingly excellent people don't blame themselves whenever they face any difficulty uh, defeat you know they don't blame themselves they don't blame others they don't even believe in in, in excuses excuses means pretext okay pretext kunti sakulu something we say in telugu right and they believe in results and results only they only believe in the results that's all and they know the truth of life what is the truth of life that it is big world the world is a big one and next in terms of opportunity and it is also full of opportunities so this is the truth of life they know pretty well and that's why now it is getting bigger all the time and these opportunities are also growing bigger and bigger and bigger don't think you have no opportunity to grow or to prosper in life there is a there is a chance for you there is an opportunity for you to grow and prosper in life okay remember that point from this passage and here uh, what is it if you are not fulfilled or successful or prosperous as you know you could be stop making excuses and stop blaming your parents stop your education and your surroundings and take all responsibility for your circumstances so in this passage you know he says if at all you have not become successful fulfilled or successful or prosperous okay if you have not become so then what what should you do you should stop Stop making excuses you should not make excuses you should not show pretext because of this only I have failed in life because of this only I have failed in life don't say like that that's called pretext so and he also said the writer of the passage says don't blame your parents because of my uneducated parents I am like this don't say that 
because of your uneducated parents you are not like this because of you only you are like that that point you have to understand and don't blame your education because of our uh, poor teachers you know they don't know anything and because of my faulty teachers i am like this don't never blame your teachers and education and never blame your surroundings i was brought up in a in poor conditions or too poor background or miserable background never say like that yeah and the next you know and uh, take responsibility for your circumstances for all these things you must take responsibility you must take responsibility yourself for your poor education for your you can say defeats for all your you can say problems you know you must take responsibility on yourself okay and here get up and look for situation you want and uh, you must search always for uh, opportunities opportunities don't come to you you must search for them whenever you find an opportunity you must seize it you must take it you must make use of it that should be your uh, uh, motto of the life okay and here you if you can't find it make it suppose if at all you have not found any opportunity but uh, then what should you do you must create a new one for yourself you must make a new one for yourself it's a wonderful passage as far as my knowledge goes with this passage please this is a very meaningful passage and a very helpful passage also for you okay now this is the meaning of the passage okay now let's go to the uh, questions now answer the following questions based on the given passage okay given passage okay what are the questions let us see them uh, common people do not realize their dreams due to ignorance about due to ignorance about and here uh, what is that you know i'll take the help of my iphone to answer this question uh, what is that uh, okay yes due to ignorance about what four options are given here what are those four options the power of learning due to ignorance about the power of learning about the power of money about the power of people about the power of light no this is wrong this is wrong this is wrong only this one is the right one it is clearly given in the passage in the first paragraph itself yes it happens due to lack of knowledge and ignorance about the power of learning answering these questions is very important okay is very easy also in in answering the comprehension questions you know there are two ways first you read the passage and answer the question this is the traditional method right and another uh, let uh, another modern method is there of uh, uh, read the questions and options uh, and search for the answers that is also another way of uh, attempting this uh, uh, comprehension reading comprehension question right and here uh, what is that here these three are wrong only this one is the right one and now you go to the next question what is that excellent people live their dream by extracting extracting me by learning from what from uh, options are given nature social circle failure this one is correct this one is correct this is wrong that's why this is wrong she nature okay is correct money failure no okay, this is wrong so because of this one no this is wrong nature environment this is correct this is correct personal charm no this is wrong that's why this is wrong nature past experience and failure these are the three correct these three can uh, things are correct and that's why this is the right one one two three are wrong and uh, nature past experience no we have to learn excellent people will learn lessons from nature past experience and failure that is clearly given in this uh, uh, what is that exam uh, passage okay and now let's go to the next question Sixty-third question is there. Excellent people dash 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 is given. What should we use in this bank? Excellent people. What should we use in? Never face setbacks. No. Face setbacks. Yes. Or always perfect. No. Or self contemptuous. No. So these three are wrong. Only this one is the right one here. It is clearly written in the passage. Okay. Right. Uh, now we go to the sixty-fourth question. The truth of life is already. I have told you about what is the truth of life. The truth of life is that this world is very big and it is full of opportunities. These are the two truths, you know. That is the truth of life. What is that? In terms of opportunity, the truth of life is in upper in terms. Well, the very first one is the right one. It is full of in terms of opportunity means this world is full of opportunities. You have so many opportunities. Um, 
the job is you have to choose the right opportunity and follow that okay that's only what you have to do and here terms of this is wrong this is wrong and this is wrong okay now you go to the 65th one if you can't find the situation you want that means if you can't find a, a suitable uh, opportunity for you like if you can't find yourself a suitable opportunity what should you do you have to uh, what should you do here is given give up no look around for help no make it is correct and postpone it so if at all you don't find an opportunity yes that uh, suits you what should you do you must uh, create your own uh, opportunity you must uh, make your own opportunity and follow that and fulfill it so these are the answers of these five questions 66 to 60 uh, 70 that means again five questions are given so every time uh, in the grammar part you know first you are given you are being given a passage one point and the second one is a, a passage with five blanks will be given so these are just common not only in our paper two but also in the paper one that's why i request all of you to watch even the uh, videos made on the paper tech paper one also so that you can have a very good experience okay for that experience sake you watch the paper one question paper uh, or the video also okay right and here the following passage contains uh, 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 contains uh, five numbered blanks five is missing here please i am very sorry for that five numbered blanks identify the correct option for each of the blanks from those given against each number so here are given uh, you know this is the passage and here these two are uh, co uh, colored in blue and these are colored in red it is because this is one aspect and this is another are two, two passages are clubbed here into one passage that is only the reason why and here if possible it's also very meaningful and uh, meaningful to you come on you just see that if possible okay find a quiet place quiet means very calm not quiet quiet has another meaning to you i quiet means you are quiet sorry this is quiet 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 this is quiet quiet e t p e see the different quiet means you are completely you are quite wrong be quiet be calm this is calm so find a quiet place to study now now you are preparing for the tet examination you must find a quiet place okay you dash to spend a reasonable amount of time reasonable amount you want to get through the tet examination you must spend a reasonable amount of time not studying for one hour or two hours not enough you must study for five hours to five to seven hours of time so reasonable amount of time for home study and two to three hours on working days will be and suppose if you are an employee you are working elsewhere and you don't have much time throughout the day you have to be in the office and then what should you do you have to allocate at least two to three hours of time for study for preparation okay see uh, for uh, is su sufficient if you are in your postgraduate or professional uh, what is that is studies for your postgraduate studies or professional studies you should allocate or for your examinations also i am saying for your postgraduate professional studies and for your examinations you must allocate two to three hours of study that's dash sufficient he says so this is one paragraph and here there is dash of common sense in the dash pro in the proverb dash there is dash of common sense in the proverb dash good students usually have as their friends other good friends okay xavier was dash student but in standard uh, ninth he began to uh, improve fast the reason he gave was that uh, vincent who came into his life was a good student so this is one paragraph this is another paragraph these two paragraphs of club here and now let us answer these uh, questions given below okay and i cannot come back to this i take the help of my iphone come on let's go to the uh, uh, questions so 66th one is there should need has was so here the blank is for a quiet for a quiet place to study you dash to spend you dash to spend means after dash okay two is there okay this this is a clue and when there is clue this one is there you cannot say should two is not there not possible has two is not possible was two is not possible only need is possible there so in that way also this clue is telling you that uh, these three are not possible in that blank and only need is possible that's why you say what is that uh, you need to spend you cannot say you should to spend you has to spend moreover here the subject is you so when it is you this uh, has does not go with you was does not go with you and that's why these two are wrong 
this is also not wrong because this it doesn't go with two so therefore in this blank only two is there and logical explanation this is right and 66th one is over and now you go to the 67th one okay usually frequently always often what is the blank given here you have to say two to three hours uh, uh, on working days will be dash sufficient after dash sufficient dash sufficient means two to three hours of working day on working days will be dash you cannot say frequently sufficient no often sufficient no always sufficient no usually you say usually means generally two to three hours are enough you tell your good friends are why just two three hours are generally two two hours two hours are enough for this uh, preparation generally usually means generally so here these three words are not acceptable in that blank and only this uh, first uh, one is the right one okay that's there and you go to the next one 68th one is there what is that you know better enough a lot sufficient okay and uh, you see the blank you know what is that you know uh, what is that you know better okay this is second paragraph there is dash of common there is of uh, there is dash of common okay this is a blank of common okay common some sentences common sense some sentences there so here it is there so better of common sense you cannot say enough of enough after enough of is not used sufficient of you cannot use so this is not okay this is not okay and here that only lot of a lot is used with a lot a lot of only a lot will take this off after because after the blank there is what off is there okay ah there is dash off after dash off is there this off goes with a lot but not with better enough and sufficient and therefore these three are wrong and only this one is the right one and now you go to the next question 69th one is there birds of same feather flock together be as a roman while in rome do good and be good in the bush a bird in hand is better than two so these are all proverbs okay and here the question is there is a lot of common sense already we have used that uh, fill, in, fill in the uh, fill in the blank and there is a lot of common sense in the proverb dash what is that proverb so to fill in this blank you know the next sentence will be of great help to you what is the next sentence good students okay here i am reading from the passage good students usually have as their friends oh other other good friends that means you know good students will have uh, only good students as their friends the meaning of the sentence is good students will have only good students as their friends dull students will have only dull students as their friends okay that's why now a gentleman says show me your friend i tell you your character that means if you are an intelligent boy if your friend is an intelligent boy if he is a smart boy automatically you are also like that if he is a dull boy and a hopeless boy then you are also because you know uh, according to your uh, you can say mentality you make friends with others okay only the birds of same feather will flock together not this one not this one not because in the next sentence you no know, it is clearly given that you know good friends will have only good friends good students will have only good students as their friends dull students will have only dull students as their friends okay that is the reason that's why you know, here this this uh, proverb says birds of same feather will flock together means the birds of same category same race same species will flock together so this is the right one and all others are wrong and now you go to the uh, 70th question last question and here what is that sir Xavier was dash student okay Xavier was dash student but in standard 9th he began to improve fast earlier this Xavier was dash student dash student means here indifferent is given indifferent means not showing interest in education let me say that he was indifferent okay not what is that why say he was dash student a indifferent no because you know this word is beginning with a vowel sound and therefore you cannot use a but here it is a use used that's why it is wrong the indifferent no much indifferent no and indefinite this is the right one so indifferent is beginning with vowel sound and an is the used therefore an indifferent student this javier was an indifferent student earlier but uh, in the uh, but in standard ninth uh, he began to improve fast okay so these are the five questions uh, given under this small passage very interesting passage is given and all questions are also very easy you can easily do it think that you, it is everything easy for you every time you must tell yourself that you are going to fare well in the examination don't be afraid of the examination please 
be confident and think that you are going to do it successfully well that should be your motto okay right and now let's go to the next question 71st one why haven't you gone to school today he said to her why haven't you gone to school uh, so this is given in the this is in the direct speech you know this very this is a reporting where you know that very well and uh, what should be the question that you understand that you know on seeing this question you understand that that examiner okay the test giver is asking you to change this into indirect speech quite common the same question let us see the same question when you have when you change the above sentence into reported speech reported speech means indirect speech okay you will get the following that means instead of asking you to change this sentence into indirect speech directly so he is uh, no, asking this question in a different way to confuse you that much only is there nothing more than that and here why have you gone to school today he said to her so now this is the direct speech and this is the reporting well let us solve this here only and let us search for the answers from the options okay and here why haven't you this is the wh question okay and this is the reporting well now bring that you know to this front question whenever there is an uh, when, whenever there is a, an ordinary question or a wh question in the direct speech you know you must uh, change this reporting verb into ask okay that's why you say he asked said to his turn to ask what is the object her he asked her okay are you following me please okay and now this is the wh question whenever uh, whenever you join this uh, reporting verb in direct speech you know you must use whatever the wh word is here okay you have to use it as it is okay why is there now after writing this you must change this question into uh, is question order into ordinary sentence order so having to means what's the subject here this is the, the bring it to the front you have what what will it become you haven't gone this is the question part you haven't you gone is the question you put it in the right way you haven't gone to school today that is all right okay right this is there after changing this question order into the right sentence order you can now change it very easily you means who her so that is turned into she okay and this is in the present perfect tense and this present perfect tense should be changed into past perfect tense and you know the rules about speech whenever the reporting verb is in the past tense automatically all the present tenses of the direct speech must be changed into the relevant past tenses that is a rule so here uh, the reporting verb is in the past tense therefore uh, this present perfect should be changed into past perfect so that it become what hadn't she asked her why she hadn't gone is always main verb should not be changed only the helping verb should be changed right okay i am going to we can say uh, upload very shortly uh, three videos very important videos they are very very useful and helpful to you uh, a video on uh, what is that uh, degrees of comparison very useful for tech students and uh, a video on voice very very useful a video on speech very very important okay. be ready to watch that very shortly he asked her why she hadn't gone to school here today is there you know very well today means today and uh, one rule is there uh, while changing uh, the direct speech into indirect speech what is it all the words indicating nearness should be turned into the words indicating distance so here today is there it is indicating uh, nearness today and that should be changed into that day so the right uh, the reported speech of this one is he asked her why she hadn't gone to school that day now let us check whether that answer is there in the options or not okay he asked her why you had it. so here uh, he, he should have turned this you into she but you is used as it is and that's why this is wrong and here he asked her why she hadn't gone to school today so here everything is okay why she had it gone but today is not turned into that day that's why this is wrong he asked her okay why she hadn't gone to school that day okay this is there right okay sorry this is the right one and here in the fourth uh, sentence you know he asked why how oh, sorry is missing here object is missing here and uh, that's why what is that you no know, this is wrong here in this fourth one her is object is missing that's why it's wrong and here today is as it is used that's why this is wrong and here you is used instead of she that's why this is wrong only the third one is the right one 72nd question pick out the correct sentence among the following correct sentence yes what is the correct sentence no sooner had i put the phone down than it rang again okay the very first one is the right one 
and all others are wrong. Why? Let me explain it to you like this. Okay, this is a new no sooner sentence. So, okay, no sooner dash dash than. Okay, this no sooner is always followed by the adverb than. Okay, okay, it's a conjunction. No sooner than. Okay, so whenever no sooner is there, so the pattern is like this: no sooner plus past perfect perfect inversion plus than. Remember this: no sooner. Plus past perfect inversion. Inversion means uh, first helping verb, then subject. Okay. Past perfect inversion and then. This should be the right one. So here you see that no sooner is there. Had I put inversion is there. It is not I had put. It is the right sentence. But here with no sooner, we should always use the past perfect inversion. Had I put only, we have to say. We should not say I had put. I had put is the right one. Had I put is inversion. So this is there, right? This is right, and this is also right. Okay, and then this is right. So this is there. But here, in all, in the second, third, fourth sentences, you see that no sooner than immediately use it. That's why this is wrong. No sooner than immediately use it. Then no sooner I had put. It. You see, it is used in the right manner. It should be actually in the past inversion. Had I put, it should be like this. So inversion is since inversion is not here. That's why this is wrong. Since than is used along with the no sooner, immediately this is wrong. Okay. Dan should be used somewhere else right here, not immediately after, no, no sooner. That's why these three are wrong and only this one is the right one. Okay, 73rd question. You must buy a ticket to see the picture. Okay, this uh, statement is given here and now let us see that. What is he asking you? The, change the above sentence into a compound form. He is asking you to change this sentence into a compound sentence. It is the simple sentence. It is the simple sentence. Already, I have uh, told you about it. Uh, this in one of my earlier videos. Okay. Okay. What is that? You know, there are uh, three kinds of sentences from one angle. What are they? Simple sentences, compound sentences, complex sentences. Okay. Simple sentences means uh, in in those sentences there will be no conjunctions used at all. And uh, compound means what is that? Conjunctions are used. Complex conjunctions. So now about conjunctions, I would like to tell you one important thing. There are two kinds of conjunctions: coordinating conjunctions and subordinating conjunctions. Any two sentences. What is the nature? What is the duty of a conjunction? Joining two statements together. Go joining two phrases together. Okay, that is there, right? Two words or two phrases or two sentences, right? Okay, leave it. And now there are two kinds of conjunctions: coordinating and subordinating. And what is the job of the coordinating? They also join two. Two sentences together, but uh, whenever two statements are joined by the coordinating conjunctions, they are called compound sentences. Whenever the two say statements are joined by subordinating conjunctions, uh, they are called uh, complex sentences, right? And here, let me give you again uh, some idea about them. Compound sentences are there. sorry, coordinating conjunctions, right? Subordinating. For your convenience, I am giving you once again the same subordinating conjunctions, right? And here, what are the coordinating conjunctions? And, sorry, why? And as well as both and not only but also. This is one set. Second set is there. What is that? But uh, at uh, still. However, nevertheless, whereas, these are one set, okay? And another set is there, or, nor, or else, otherwise, okay? Uh, either or, neither nor, these are another set of coordinating conjunctions and the last one here is for and so. So these are all coordinating conjunctions uh, and the sentences joined by these coordinating conjunctions are called uh, compound sentences. That means coordinating conjunctions form compound sentences. And here, let me tell you something about the con subordinate conjunctions. There are so many subordinate conjunctions uh, are there. Uh, so I am going to you can say give a few of them here. So uh, as, since, 
okay uh, before okay after till until okay when as soon as oh, as soon as while that uh, no sooner uh, than that is also there okay and uh, here because lest if only important things i am giving unless though although as if even if these are all etc there are so many uh, subordinating conjunctions the subordinate conjunctions are divided into eight parts and we learn uh, the about the subordinating conjunctions in some other class okay and here uh, whenever the two statements are joined by these subordinate conjunctions uh, they form what is that uh, complex sentences that means subordinate conjunctions form complex sentences coordinate conjunctions form compound sentences and now this man is asking you to change the sentence into uh, compound because you know if there are in a sentence if there is uh, neither a coordinate conjunction nor a subordinate conjunction then it is called a simple sentence when if there is no coordinate conjunction or subordinate conjunction then it is a simple sentence right and now he is asking you to change it into uh, the compound sentence and come on let us now please keep this point in mind and now let us go to see the answers okay if you buy a ticket see you must buy a ticket to see the picture in order to see the picture, you must buy a ticket. This is the meaning of the sentence, right? And if you buy a ticket, you can see. So, if means it is a subordinating conjunction. So, this cannot be a compound sentence, right? Buy a ticket, then you can see the picture. No, there is no conjunction at all, no. And uh, buy a ticket and subordinating, uh, coordinating conjunction is here. This is the right one. Unless, again, it is also a coordinating, uh, subordinating, con subordinating conjunction. Therefore, this is a complex sentence. This is a complex sentence. Since there is no, what is that, uh, any is conjunction. This is not a, uh, this is neither a uh, complex sentence or compound sentence. Okay. So, in this way, one, two, four are wrong and only the uh, third one is the right one. Buy a ticket and and is a uh, coordinating conjunction that always makes all coordinating conjunctions will make what is that a compound sentence so with the and uh, this is made what is that a compound sentence by a ticket and you can see the picture right okay now let's go to the next uh, uh, question 74th one no one can do anything this is a statement okay and now what is the examiner asking you test, give, test giver is asking you the sentence can mean what is the meaning of this sentence? No one ever can do anything. Amy Chayaleru. That is the Telugu meaning of this sentence. Now, the same meaning must be there in one of the uh, following options. Anything can be done. No. Anything could not be done. No. Anything is done. No. Nothing can be done. This is the right one. No one can do anything means what? Ever who Amy Chayaleru and Amy Chaya Badadu. Nothing can be done must be the right one. So, these three are wrong and the, this one is the right one. 75th one, my family has been living in Hyderabad for hundreds of years is a statement and what is the test giver is asking you? Let us see that. Identify the auxiliary verb. Okay. He is talking to you about the auxiliary verbs. Okay. And uh, since uh, we have come across this auxiliary verb, I hope you know very well about the auxiliary verbs. Of course, if you don't know, I will give you a small idea here. And uh, auxiliary verbs are there. Auxiliary verbs are here. Auxiliary verb means, uh, don't get confused, it is nothing but helping verbs. Auxiliary verbs means helping verbs. This is a grammatical term and this is a general English term. Auxiliary means helping. Helping means auxiliary. Okay, right. We have two kinds of auxiliary verbs. Primary auxiliary verbs. Primary auxiliary verbs. What are the primary auxiliary verbs? All B forms. What are the B forms, sir? Am, is, are, was, and were. These are the B forms. These are primary auxiliary verbs. Right. And here, next, do, do, do forms are there. Do, does, and did. Okay. Do, does, did. 
they are also though they are main verbs they are used as helping verbs or primary auxiliary verbs okay do does did and then comes have has had okay these are also helping verbs or uh, what is the primary auxiliary verbs okay and now you go to the second one what is that model auxiliary verbs model auxiliary verbs okay model auxiliary what are the model auxiliary verbs shall should will would can could uh, uh, may might okay uh, can may might must okay ought to dare need etc these are all what is that you know model auxiliaries can could may might must so these are all model auxiliaries primary so whether they are model auxiliaries or primary auxiliaries on the whole they are called auxiliary verbs or helping verbs and now he is asked the question is if I identify the auxiliary verb let us see the question here has in this sentence you know what is the auxiliary verb we used here what is that what is that has has is what primary auxiliary okay is not asking primary auxiliary or model auxiliary but uh, what is the auxiliary used here has this is the right one been is not the right one living is not very simple very easy right and now you go to the uh, next question shall i wait till you come uh, the fun uh, the function okay and here uh, i'll clear this one shall i wait till you come this is a question the function of the model what is the model used here shall what is the function of the model in the above sentence? What is that? Okay. What is that? Here, let us see the options. Obligation. Is it indicating obligation? No. Is it indication offer? Yes. Is it indicating order? No. Is any suggestion? No. See, shall I wait till you come? Ni vachadaka wait che mantava. What is that? In that questioning, you find some offer. Some offer is there. That's why this is correct and all others are wrong. 77th one, I went to the station to say goodbye to my grandmother. So this is underlined. To say goodbye is underlined. I have uh, put it in the violet color. And uh, here are given. What is the question? Choose the correct phrasal verb. Okay. So every time a question on phrasal verbs is being given, please keep an eye on the phrasal verbs and idioms also. Please. And uh, instead of the underlined word, okay, instead of this underlined word, what is the phrase, phrasal verb? You can say for this. That, uh, and now let me tell you about this. Okay. Uh, see off, drop off, put off, dash off. So here, uh, the very first one, see off is, means you not know, to say goodbye. I went to the airport to see off my son. Who is going to the USA to see off? To see off means to bid farewell, to say goodbye. And drop off means what is that? Uh, drop off means uh, uh, to doze off or to sleep. You can also say to sleep. And my my brother usually dozes off, drops off or dozes off while watching the TV. Some people, what happens? You know, they drop off while watching the TV. TV choose that line either about that. So it is there. Drop off means to doze off or sleep. That's there. And put off to postpone. To put off. Never put off until tomorrow. What you can do today? Hero chase dani re pati kosamu postpone chaya baku. Put off. Postpone. And here dash off. Dash off means to run off. Ventane veli. Vegranga veli poda. I have to dash off to the airport to pick my uh, relative, to pick my friend uh, coming from the USA. US in church, now Mitruni received yes, Kodanki. I must dash off to the airport. Dash off means to run off. To run off. So these are very beautiful phrases, phrasal verbs. Okay. Right. So here, this is the right one. These are the these are the wrong ones. And you go to the seventy eighth one. Fitness regime should be a part and parcel of everyday life. This part and parcel is a phrase only. Okay, it's not a phrasal verb. It's a phrase. Okay. Now, what is the uh, examiner asking you to do? The underlined phrase means. Okay. What is the meaning of this part and parcel? Dedicated. No. Help one another. No. Livelihood. No. An integral part. This is a part and parcel. An important part of something. Honesty is a part and parcel of his nature. 
నీతి నిజాయితి అనేది అతని యొక్క క్యారెక్టర్లో ఒక భాగము ఆనెస్టీ ఈజ్ ఎ పార్ట్ అండ్ పార్సల్ ఆఫ్ హిస్ క్యారెక్టర్ ఎ పార్ట్ అండ్ పార్సల్ మీన్స్ ఎన్ ఇంటిగ్రల్ పార్ట్ అండ్ ఆల్ దీస్ థింగ్స్ ఆర్ రాంగ్ అండ్ ఓన్లీ దిస్ వన్ ఇస్ రైట్ వన్ లెట్స్ గో టు ద సెవెంటీ నైన్త్ వన్ నిక్ మేనేజ్ టు పుల్ త్రూ టు బికమ్ అన్ ఇంటర్నేషనల్ సింబల్ ఆఫ్ ట్రైమ్ ఫర్ అడ్వర్సిటీ అడ్వర్సిటీ నౌ దిస్ అడ్వర్సిటీ ఈస్ అండర్లైన్డ్ అండ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఆర్ సో కలర్డ్ ఇన్ వైలెట్ right and now what is the uh, examiner asking you to do the underlined word means what is the meaning of this adversity okay let us see the options here disability movement difficulties opposition so dear test takers disability is wrong and about this disability di disability i would like to tell you so uh, inability is there disability is there uh, please see the difference inability means incapacity incapability asamardhata inability incapacity in incapability asamardhata right and disability disability means uh, angavaikalyam see the difference you must th you might think you know uh, inability disability both are the same but it's not like that slight difference is inability that disability means impairment and movement all of you know that very well difficulties kashtalu right and here adversity means that this one is the right word and this is not right this is not right opposition okay right so these three are wrong and only this one is the right one and now let's go to the 80th question what is that in which of the following words is h pronounced okay right and here what are the options okay as yes, i have given these word uh, these words in a loosely you know a loosely you can say written words is a our so we don't pronounce this h in this uh, word our we pronounce the word from o so our 60 minutes make an hour okay and forest there is no h word at all honor in this also h is silent we are pronouncing the word from o so in this word in this fourth one and the first one h is silent it is not being pronounced and in the third one there is no h at all and that's why the first one third one fourth one around and the second one you see howl ha ha howl howl means to give a prolonged uh, cry of distress dogs howl during the night oh dogs bark that is different but dogs dogs sometimes howl jackals howl ula veita oh all chance at that so they will be crying that's a cry of distress adoka baadha tho kurina arupu so howl in this word howl only h is being pronounced and therefore this one is the right one and all others are the wrong ones okay 81st question one of the following is not a plural form such a simple question what is that roses it's a plural form okay not a plural form roses is a plural form s yes. a boys is a plural form cats is but this is not a plural form because what is that okay this uh, as per our this thing this is wrong this is wrong this is wrong and this is not the right one because boys you know boys if you add just simply s yes to that it becomes plural but if you if at all you add apostrophe s it becomes a possessive case it is a boy shirt boy shirt a boy shirt balun yokka shirt It's a boy's bicycle. Here, this is not in the a plural form. All others are the plural form. Eighty-second one. When one is looking up for the departure of train in the newspaper, what is that? You are looking up for the departure of the train in the newspaper. In the newspaper, you are looking for the departure of the train. How do you? What do you do then? Then one is reading. No, you don't read that. Looking for information. No, scanning. Right? Skimming. Wrong. so when you look for some particular aspect what do you do you scan it you want the departure of the train you want only this and nothing else and that's why what do you do you scan that information in the newspaper you only scan it where is that uh, you leave all other information aside you put it aside only you want this information so you are searching for the particular information and that's why when you try to find out the particular information you need what is that is scanning not other things okay this is the right, wrong 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 this is the right one now you go to the next question 83rd one curriculum vtech gives information about very interesting the holistic personality the very first one is the right one wrong 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 
here holistic means comprehensive comprehensive means comprehensive savivaramaina something like the comprehensive in telugu you can say savivaramaina because in the curriculum vite what do you do you tell uh, you, you write about your parents about your uh, home home native place about your date of birth about your uh, school education college education degree education about your experience oh you tell so many things so here it is a holistic pursuit comprehensive savivaran savivaramaina something in telugu okay so uh, the need of the person now the waiting ability of the person now the speaking ability of the person now these three are wrong only this is the right one this uh, curriculum vita gives information about holistic personality right now let's go to the 84th one presentation of ideas with clarity connectivity and thoroughness is what in the presentation in the passage there is clarity clarity is the connectivity from that means connectivity between one idea and another idea and you are connecting one idea with another idea so clear connectivity is there thoroughness is there and there is some uh, what is that you know uh, thoroughness is there some complete picture is there you don't find any it is in the in the broken form but it is in you know, unity is there thoroughness is there so clarity connectivity thoroughness thoroughness means here unity all these things are there and this is called what comprehension now comprehension deals with only uh, reading a passage given to you and understanding that the act of understanding a comprehend passage is called comprehension revision means you know very well revising the questions revising the uh, you can say lessons that is the comparison you compare one with another thing so so this is wrong this is wrong this is wrong. cohesion is there cohesion what should you say cohesion cohesion means unity unity between clarity connectivity and thoroughness that is called he cohesion so presentation of ideas with clarity connectivity thoroughness is called cohesion cohesion means complete unity so that's why uh, this you know cohesion is the right one and other all others are wrong 85th one frequency and usefulness uh, form the uh, basis of one of the following where do you find this frequency and usefulness frequency means that must be used very frequently usefulness means frequency in mathematics is different and in the language in you know, a frequency means it should be used very frequently frequent use frequent use of certain things is called frequency usefulness these two things can be found where situational approach no grammar traditional no language games no only in the structural approach you find structural approach what is that this deals structural approach deals with what is that yes with the with, with the teaching of uh, uh, structures to the students these structures are also called you know structures structures means some in, in in the in teaching the language what happens so there are some structures these structures are also called uh, uh, verb patterns they are also called uh, sentence patterns some structure is there subject b form noun noun or pronoun this is one structure some example is given is yes, uh, what is it she is a doctor this is structure basing on this structure uh, the student is asked to do so many sentences he is a what is that a driver they are employees what is that yes we are indians whatever it is so here only b form must be there here subject must be there like that this is a structure and uh, you can improve your english language uh, very fast uh, by going through various very very important structures and this is very very useful in everyday life use you use this structure very frequently and this is also very useful so that's why structural approach means teaching verb patterns or sentence patterns to the students is called structural approach and this you know in this uh, structural approach only these two things uh, uh, you can say become the base useful useful structure frequent structures these are frequent one useful structures these two things can be found in this that's why this is the right one and now you go to the next uh, uh, remedial teaching is essential for remedial teaching okay you can find all these things in the pedagogy please go through that pedagogy uh, you can say you can understand all these things and uh, here uh, remedial teaching is essential for good learners no slow learners no yes gifted learners no only any learner with a gap suppose you you did not go to school for a week or 10 days 
because of some covid or some uh, you can say you are afflicted with some kind of uh, disease okay suppose you are you have met with an accident take for granted for some days you know you have not gone to school or college then there is a gap and how can you, uh, you can say uh, recover that how can you learn the things that were taught during that period during that gap so for such people this remedial teaching is very very important of course remedial teaching means it is nothing but reteaching reteaching the things of course in a crash course manner and in my on one of my earlier videos i have mentioned it is more like a crash course very fast they teach so many things and for that's why remedial teaching is essential for any learner with a gap okay this is the right answer and now you go to the next question 87th one continuous comprehension evaluation okay uh, focuses on okay continuous comprehensive and evaluation cce it is a, uh, in abbreviation it's called you know when it's abbreviated it becomes cce cce focuses on where it cc means comprehensive evaluation it focuses on only process evaluation 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 sorry evaluation means you know continuous evaluation okay examination so you when uh, as a teacher you must keep uh, an eye on the students and you must observe them you must observe them you must examine them you must evaluate them on the, on the basis of the uh, you can say homework they do on the basis of the slip tests uh, and uh, unit tests uh, on the basis of the answers they give in the class on the basis of all those things you know you assess how far the student you know how the students are faring how the students are doing in the class okay this is process evaluation product evaluation wrong achievement evaluation wrong uh, achievement only wrong basics so only these are wrong and this is the right one cce focuses on process evaluation and now let's go to the 88th one the paradigm shift in learning in national curriculum framework national curriculum framework 2005 is what is that what can you find in the national curriculum uh, framework discovery learning no activity based learning no teacher centered learning this is already there so exploratory exploratory learning is there exploratory learning means what is that you know it is nothing but active learning approach in this the children are given an opportunity to work on their own and are also given uh, what is that ample support from the teachers okay and uh, exploratory learning will be uh, will be a uh, very uh, joyful and a happy thing for the children so that's why this kind of change they have brought in the national curriculum framework this change has been because uh, teacher center means you know teacher will be teaching and the students will be listening to the teacher so the student becomes passive and only the teacher is active that is not the way of uh, you can say importing education the teacher should be like that and only the student should be active that means student centric teaching must be there okay this exploratory learning is a student centric uh, teaching that is method of, okay right and that's why uh, these three are wrong and only this one is the right one 89th one micro teaching is what micro teaching is what an approach no a method no a device no it's a technique it is a teacher training faculty development technique okay let me say teacher training okay faculty development okay development technique okay that's why now it's a technique teacher training faculty development technique and that's why it's not an approach it's not a method it's not a device it's all that okay now let's go to the last question what is that public address is an example of what is a public address public address means it's an example of a soft skill all, all people cannot become the speakers okay so public address is a soft skill which requires what uh, uh, what is that uh, language skill no reading reading readiness skill no linguistic skill no communicative skill is very important so even if you have language some people will have language but they don't express that that will be only with them they use that uh, skill of language skill only in writing but not in expressing not in communicating so that's why this is wrong this is wrong this is wrong communicative if at all you have language in you you must express that you must communicate that so that's why public address is what is that a soft skill which requires what is that excellent communicative skill okay that's why you now kcr speech you see that narendra modi speech you see that they are all you know in that you know you can find the communicative skill they mesmerize the people they impress the people with their words okay they attract all the people attending his uh, meetings you know uh, towards himself towards herself 
that is the greatness of a public speaker and public address is nothing but a, a communicative skill ok right uh, with this I bring this uh, uh, video to an end hello dear test takers thank you so much for watching my video and I also request you to watch my other videos made on paper one also please and uh, uh, this is going to be my last video and uh, if uh, you if at all you like my video please consider subscribing to my channel okay you are all watching my videos but you are not subscribing to my channel and uh, in future i am going to upload so many videos on grammatical aspects uh, that are going to be very very useful and helpful to you i'll be back to you with another beautiful video on degrees of comparison until then um, bye all of you thank you so much